how obsessed are you with social media? I mean, are you, are you always looking at it? Are you staying away from it? What's it's a bit of a disease, I think. You know, this Twitter, um, I'm more Twitter friendly in terms of, you know, I, I don't see myself like, on, I'm not on Facebook. But well, you, didn't, you didn't tweet your, your dog yet, right? No, uh, I have, of you course have I have. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm not doing it obsessively, but um, I, I, have to, I have Instagrammed no boo. Uh, but uh, I'm a bit, I'm quite obsessive about Twitter. I mean, I, I see myself like in mid-conversation, sometimes you don't realize that, you know, which is actually unfortunate because we turn to our phones for almost everything nowadays. And uh, that if you're in a, while you're talking to somebody, I find you, I see myself looking at it and then I'm still looking and I can actually multitask, but it's not polite. It's actually really kind of, and it, it, you have to check yourself all the time because now it's become a part of your DNA and it's really quite... Um, uh, and you turn to it to find out everything, you know, how things are, what's happening in the world. It's become my newspaper. It's become my one, it's my one-stop shop for information on what's happening in the world. Um, it's, but it's a bit too much because you're cluttering your headspace all the time with too many things. I mean, while I said right at the top that opinions matter, but they can't control you. And then information can't rule you. You know, that's what keeps happening when you're kind of obsessed by social media, which I think I'm borderline am. It's a bit of a disease. But you know, there was a time when you actually got off it. I remember meeting yes. you some years ago when you were seriously trolled for some something, some, some years ago. Yeah, and it was I a six-month sabbatical. Yeah, it was a go you got off it and you said it is just too much to deal with. I think then I went through this process where I wanted to disconnect from it and then it drew me back just like, just like, you know, a magnet. Like, like a magnet. Yeah, it just brought me right back and now I'm finding myself again, every time I feel like now I should give up, I should stay away, I should, you know, keep a distance from it. But, but I'm in the profession, you see, I make multiple movies, I do things that are always requiring me to connect with social media, to either endorse my product, speak about it, platform it, position it. So I'm always part of it. I can't not be now. I mean, you know. Yeah, but you also tweet about other movies as well, you know. I do. So, and, 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 and lots of other, your you know, your colleagues. So do you actually... You've seen all of those films and you... No, I lie sometimes also. Uh, I sometimes tweet about films that I haven't seen. Yeah, but I, I say nice things. Okay. We can't now start being okay. honest now. On, I mean, who's honest now? Okay. That's ridiculous. You can't be honest at all. Uh, we all live in, yeah. a, in an industry where we have to meet these people at a party the next night. I mean, I can't say your movie sucks and then say, hi, hey, hi, how are you doing the next day? So you can't. Okay. And I find that if I tweet once and I feel I have to do it for everyone I know. So okay. it's a bit of a vicious... And only I'm... In my head, I'm, I'm the only one who's bothering about all these things. I don't think it's really crossing the person's concerns head as much as it's crossing my head. I'm a bit hyper about, you know, kind of pleasing the world. It's, I've had this miscongeniality problem. It's a childhood thing. Um, I feel the need to kind of always uh, be nice to everybody. I'm trying to tone that down. It's much better now. Uh, it's one of my other problems. <laughs> um, I have many.